Hello students, this is the second part of algorithm and time complexity. In this part, we will be dealing with how complex an algorithm is and how complexity can be denoted by big O notation. Now there are many type of time complexity for example constant time com complexity logarithmic time complexity linear time complexity quasi linear time complexity quadratic time complexity exponential time complexity factorial time complexity so these are the different types of time complexity you can see the time complexity has been denoted by big o notation means 1 log n constant time 1 it means the number of operation will be 1 in this case and it will consume a fixed amount of time for one operation depending upon the operating system and the system configuration so this is the constant time complexity if the number of operation is 1 and if the number of operation depends upon the value of n or the value of data items then it could be logarithmic time complexity linear time complexity quasi linear time complexity quadratic time complexity exponential or factorial time complexity because in all these time complexities we have n means this time complexity depends upon the value of n now which of them is more efficient I have arranged all the time complexity in the increasing not increasing decreasing efficiency of the algorithm means as the amount of time increases or number of steps increases its time complexity or its efficiency decreases now in the first time complexity which is constant time complexity big O1 okay in this number of operation will be just one it means it will consume the least time so it will be the most efficient so big O1 is the most efficient then big O log n then linear n then n log n quasi linear then n square 2 raised to power n means exponential factorial time and factorial now this factorial time complexity it is the most complex and hence the least efficient so efficiency of an algorithm is inversely proportional to the complexity of the algorithm in terms of time so complexity here it is it keeps on getting more complex okay big O1 it is the least complex and factorial time complexity is the most complex that is why the first one constant time complexity is the most efficient and factorial time complexity is the least one you can understand it with one example suppose there is only one value or one statement to be executed then time complexity will be denoted by big O1 the most efficient now suppose you have 10 data value in a list and you need to search for an item then there could be any time complexity now here linear time complexity means n as the number of n increases the number of operations will also increase in the same proportion proportion will remain constant in the worst case I am talking about these things in the worst case now logarithmic time okay each time the number of operation will not increase in the same proportion as in linear time this increment will be less than linear time that is why logarithmic time complexity is more efficient than the linear time okay now you can see the difference between linear and this quadrilateral quadratic time complexity okay suppose uh, initially uh, the number of n the value of n is 2 okay and if you increase the value of 2 
value of n from 2 to 3 then in case of linear time complexity the number of operation will be 3 okay but in quadratic time it will become 3 3 is a 9 and 2 2 is a 4 difference 9 minus 4 5 so number of operations incremented will be 5 in quadratic time okay but in the linear time complexity each time the number of operation will be incremented only by one here but here in quadratic the number of operations will be incremented each time by its square okay similarly the factorial time complexity will be very very high suppose initially the value of n is 2 2 factorial is 2 now suppose the value of n becomes 5 now number of operation will become 5 factorial means 120 you can see as the number of n increases then the number of operations increases exponentially I mean more than exponentially exponentially is 2 raised to power n but factorially you can say means it has the factorial time complexity means from 2 to 120 if you increase the number of value of n from 2 to 5 so you can see how the complexity is increasing and how efficiency is decreasing okay from top to bottom now let us understand two or three important time complexity okay by an example first constant time big o1 an algorithm is said to have a constant time when it is not dependent on the input value or input data n no matter the size of the input data the running time will always be the same for example in this example you can see there will be only one statement which will be executed either return true or return false because there is a condition so either one of the condition could be true okay so if any one condition is true one statement will be executed that is why it has time complexity big o1 or constant time complexity likewise in the linear time complexity an algorithm is said to have a linear time complexity when the running time increases at most linearly with the size of the input size input data means as you increase the value of n the number of operations will be increasing in the same proportion this is the best possible time complexity when the algorithm must examine all the values in the input data means this is the worst case so in the worst case number of operations to be executed will totally depend upon or exactly proportional to the value of n now in this example for value in data print value very generally let me tell you one thing for any loop for one loop the time complexity will always be the linear time complexity if there is only one loop you can see in the in this example which is searching for a value for this value by using linear search method in this linear search method you can see we have used or we have implemented only one loop which is for loop and it is comparing the value and returning the index of that value so this in this algorithm we have used only one loop so there will be linear time complexity so for one loop there will always be linear time complexity means complexity will always be n okay because n times this loop will be executed right so if you increase the value of n the loop will be implemented in the same proportion if the value of n is 10 the loop will be executed 10 times if the value of n is 20 the loop will be executed 20 times okay so in the same proportion the loop will be executed okay so this is linear time 
complexity so in any program if you find only one loop obviously it will have linear time complexity this is a general rule next quadratic time complexity or n square an algorithm is said to have a quadratic time complexity when it needs to perform a linear time operation for each value in the input data for example you can see here there are two for loops okay actually it is a nested loop one loop inside another okay so this well i mean this statement print x y it will be executed n into n times n for this for loop and n for the inner for loop okay so n into n n square okay for example if the value of n initially is 2 right 2 means the number of operation will be 2 square 4 if the number of n or the value of n is 4 the number of operations will be 4 square means 16 so in this proportion the number of operations will be increasing or the growth rate of the number of operations will be like this okay so it is not as efficient as the linear time com linear time complexity okay so because complexity has increased here that is why efficiency has decreased because both these are inversely proportional to each other next is another example of quadratic time complexity you must have done in class 11 bubble sort okay we can sort a list of data items from a list okay and in bubble sort always two loops are used one loop inside the another you can see here the for loop inside the while loop okay so this is the outer loop and this is the inner loop so whenever there is a nested loop okay the time complexity will always be n square okay because these statements will be executed n into n n square time right so this is the best example of quadratic time complexity or if you find any program having nested loop certainly it is the n square it has the n square complexity or quadratic time complexity next is logarithmic time means log n an algorithm is said to have a, a logarithmic time complexity when it reduces the size of the input data in each step in each step okay the number of or the value of input data means n decreases here it is you can see in this binary search example each in each iteration the number of step is getting halved you can see like this left plus right okay divided by 2 flow division and middle value then it is checking the value with the data middle okay and the value is being returned okay so in each iteration the number of steps is being reduced by half okay so in any program if the number of steps is reducing then it will have the logarithmic time complexity right it is uh, more efficient than linear time complexity because log n is always less than n for example log 2 the value of log 2 is 1 the value of log 1 is 0 the value of log 4 is 2 so log 4 means 2 means the number of steps will be halved right so this kind of program will have the logarithmic time complexity so it is more efficient than linear time complexity and less efficient than the constant time complexity now i am giving you two examples how to calculate or find out the complexity of any program in the real time now for example just look at these statements okay the statement without any loop 
okay its frequency or its time complexity is always one okay so we will find the frequency or number of times it will be executed okay we will find for each step and finally we will add all of them okay now let us start with the first statement the first statement okay it will be executed only one time so frequency is one second it will also be executed only one time so frequency is one third statement will also be executed only once so frequency is one next statement while of this loop will execute or will be executed n plus one time okay because it will go till n plus one okay because in order to fail the condition okay you will have to increase the number of value of n by one okay so n plus one time it will be executed now this statement will be executed n times depending upon the number of or the value of n then again this statement because these two statements are the part of while loop okay so and it will be executed n times it will also be executed n times okay but the loop while loop okay this will be executed n plus one time okay so plus one is to make the condition fail now the last statement is print statement which is outside the loop it will be executed only once so one now let us sum sum up all these frequencies okay if you sum up all these frequencies then it will come out to be 5 plus 3 n now we can in the big o notation we can discard all these constant values 5 and 3 can be discarded and we only write the degree of n so degree of n is one only so the time complexity is n okay so in this way you can find the time complexity of any program like this this is a very very simple method the second example like this in this example also you can see okay the first statement it will be executed only once so frequency is one second statement will also be executed only once so frequency is one third statement will be executed only once so frequency is one now we have loop statement while loop it will be executed n plus one time now j is equal to one this is a part of while loop it will be executed n times now again you have another loop while okay now this loop will be executed n into n plus one right because it will be it will depend upon the value of n of the outer while loop okay so this while loop will be executed n into n plus one time now this sum okay it will also depend upon the number of or the value of n of the outer while loop okay so this is the inner while loop and this is the outer while loop so n square similarly this statement will be executed n into n times now i plus is equal to one okay this is the part of outer while loop okay so it is only n times it will be executed only n times now print is outside of all the loops therefore it will be executed only once so the frequency is one okay now in this way now let us add up sum up all these frequencies now the sum will be like this 6 plus 4 n plus 3 n square now in the big O notation we see the highest degree of n the highest degree of n is n square okay so this will be the time complexity so it has quadratic time complexity right in this way you can find out the time complexity of any program okay where is the loop where is the statement without any loop in this way you can find out the frequencies for each and every statement uh, sum up all the frequencies and then you can find out the time complexity okay you will get programs based on the time complexity or based I mean you could be asked to find time complexity of a particular program right what is time complexity okay these definitions you have to learn what is the difference between time complexity and space complexity right 
so each and everything you have to learn the most important thing is how to find the time complexity of a particular program so watch this video very attentively if you find any question if you have any query leave your query in the comment sections and i'll be replying all these queries